All right, I got a Yugoslavian M70 milled receiver here. May look different or funny because it's an 80 percenter. This is not considered a receiver or a firearm because it's not complete. You'll notice there's no hole for a hammer. There's no hole for a trigger. There's no slot for the trigger. There, where the ejector should be, it's just a solid bridge going across. That has to be cut out. Then this will be considered a 100% receiver or a firearm. Right now it's just a hunk of steel. They also, this has nothing to do with it being 100%, but there's no hole back here for the locking mechanism. The Yugos have this on their M70s and stuff, the stamped ones and obviously these milled ones. They have a little button you push back here that unlocks the recoil assembly and you can get the dust cover and everything off. Just keeps it locked down for grenades. Obviously we're not going to be using grenades, but that's what it was for. Their thinking was that's how they keep the dust cover from blowing off. So I'll be putting that in there since it's a milled gun. If it was a stamp gun, I would just completely, I'd just leave that out. I wouldn't even do it. I don't care for them on the stamped guns. I'm not saying all of them do it, but I've seen a couple that have cracked because that hole was so close to the top there. Also, you may have noticed that it has a lightning cut here. But it's just solid here. And that's not a boo-boo. That's not part of making an 80%. You'll see this one here, lightning cut. No lightning cut. It looks funny to me like this. It looks incomplete, but for whatever strange reason, that's the way they did it. Now, it has a pocket milled in here that a piece of basically sheet metal, a little cover, goes in here. Same thing on the end. I don't know why they did it on here, but they did it on these. That pocket is in this one in the back. But as you can see, there isn't one here. It has a hole drilled for your bullet guide because there's no bullet guide in it. It's still in here. I've got to get it out. It does have a provision or a slot milled into the front of it so your cleaning rod will go in and work. But I'm probably not going to put this pocket in here. I might later on, but I will not in this video. I, I'm just, I don't know. Primarily because I don't have the little cutter to make the, I can get one, but I'm, right now I don't have one, so I'm not going to do it. Like I said, later on, I might do it. But yeah, we're going to head up to the machine shop. We're going to take this from an 80%, which is just considered a hunk of steel. It's not a firearm. We're going to turn it into a 100% or an actual firearm. So let's go do that.
All right, we got it all drilled and milled and got everything put in it and everything seems to work pretty darn good. If you go to the their website, the Tort Tort, Tort hope I'm saying it right, the Tort Tort website, they do have PDF drawings that tells you where to put your locations for the holes and everything. They don't have one for this. I had to just copy what was on the stub I had. But yeah, all the everything's there, all the information, so you can do it yourself. I just went ahead and went to the machine shop since I had have the luxury of being able to use a, a mill and all that stuff and end mills and do that pocket. But you can do it by drilling the four points that he gives you in the drawings and then use a Dremel and just slice that out of there. It'll work just as good. I just, well, have access to a mill. Why not do it, huh? But not everybody does. If I can come up here slowly but surely so it stays in focus. Look at that. All right. As you can see where I started out using calipers. And I did that just so I could see if my marks would hit good and everything seems to work fine. I already got an injury it's from that ear right there. Ran my hand right across that thing. <laughs> Whoops! They are sharp. A little push button marks. This one's a hard one to drill because once you come, you drill out of this solid piece, it goes into half and half. Half the drill is in the material, half of it's out. You gotta be go real, real slow, or it's gonna want to push out on you. And it may still do it a few thousands. But this one seems to work all right. You see, I got a Tapco in there. I left this proud. I forgot to take the bolt and carrier with me. He does give you a measurement for doing the ejector too from the, this edge over. It's 543 thousandths is what he's got on the PDF drawing. I left it at 600. 543 should work for all of them, but I like to just, since I have the parts, I'll fit it to it. I just forgot to take it, so I didn't do it. So I left it that way. I'll have to take it back up to work and redo it, or you can do it with a file or a Dremel or whatever. If you have access to stuff like I do, might as well take advantage of it, huh? When it works, it's in the safe. Put it down here somewhere so it protect it. You don't want to go flinging it because this will damage that. They'll damage each other, especially since I don't have the 20 degree angle in here yet. It will work straight like that, but it can be a little rough on the bolt, a little slot. It's designed to have about a 20 degree angle on the back. You can do all that with a file or a Dremel. You don't have to have a mill. Ow. <laughs> It all seems to work. And now, even though there's no, come on focus, even though there's no hole here, they do give you the dimple. So you can start your barrel, which is perfect because all you gotta do is make sure this is good and flat. Drill it slow, you don't go barreling through it. Just drill it slow and you should have a nice straight pinhole through there with a factory pin. Go down slowly so it stays in focus maybe. Yeah, the carrier does fit. It's going to hit on the trigger. Since it's a semi-auto, it doesn't have the safety sear holding it down. The safety sear, the third pin hole, would actually hold it down lower. And your this wouldn't ride over it like it does here. That's why they want to hang up in the back because they sit a little higher because 
we can't have the third hole unless you pay outrageously amount of money, have the proper licensing and stuff like that. But like I said, the bolt, so I can push it down, get it in there. See, it won't go. Come up slowly. I said it's. And that'll work fine. I'll take this to work. Like I said, I forgot. So I'll take that to work. And now we have a 100% receiver. It went from a hunk of metal to 100% just by putting these two holes in this slot in here. Because now it will fire like this if the barrel and everything was in there. Of course, obviously, it won't do anything because of the ejector. But this is still considered a 100% receiver. And that's how I did my Tortort 80% milled Yugo underfolder receiver. You might go to their website, check them out. He's got pretty decent prices. Like I said, it's cheaper because he, he doesn't do all the machining. He does all the hard stuff. All you got to do is come in and do these little extra things. I think it's worth it myself. I don't know. We'll see when we get it all built up into an actual firearm. Obviously, I do have a kit for it, but this video wasn't about building an M70. This was about the receiver. So there's a Tortort 80% Yugoslavian milled receiver.